Last time we went over effective nuclear charge, shielding, and energy level as a means of explaining what we're about to go through now, which are the periodic trends. So the first periodic trend we're going to go over is atomic radius. How big are atoms? So we're going to go through these terms now and apply them to showing why some atoms are bigger than others. Now it's important with any trend, start with the definition. Even one that's as obvious as atomic radius, how big are atoms? In particular because the size of an atom is both very small, but additionally, it's not clear where to cut off an atom. So when you have your nucleus and your electrons, that electron is distributed over a space that really is infinite. And so what we want to do is we want to come up with a reasonable way to define where our limit of the atom is. In other words, that electron could be well over here, but maybe most of the time it's in within this region. So how do we define the cutoff point for the atom? And the way we do that is we take a second atom, put it in a bonding interaction with the first one, and we measure the distance between the two nuclei. So here we've drawn an H2 molecule. We would say that halfway between the protons of those two hydrogen atoms would be the radius of the hydrogen atom. Halfway between the two nuclei that are bonded together is our definition of atomic radius. Now, going across a period if we start with lithium, and we move over to carbon, and we move over to chlorine, what will happen is, even though we are adding protons and electrons, the size of those will get smaller. Lithium is three protons and three electrons. Carbon is six protons and six electrons. And fluorine is nine protons and nine electrons. We want to boil this down to very simple positive and negative charges attracting and repelling one another. But we also want to be able to phrase it using our terminology of effective nuclear charge, energy levels, and or shielding. So in this case, we look, and as we go with more protons from 3 to 6 to 9, we are increasing the pull on all these electrons. So here we have a weaker pull on these three electrons than we do over here, than we do over here. And that makes sense given that our size tends to go from large medium and the very small. But we want to give a complete analysis here, and so let's go ahead and look at everything here. So in this case, our highest occupied energy level is the second, and so we don't see any differentiation there. For our shielding, for our valence electron, we have two electron shielding have the same shielding in all three atoms. So again, note that electrons that are in the same energy level tend to shield very little than the ones that are in the previous, or compared to the ones in the previous levels. So of these seven electrons, there's very little repulsion between them because most of their repulsions are to the side and not so much outwards. And so therefore, it averages out to being very little repulsion. We combine shielding with the protons, and we can come up with an effective nuclear charge. So our effective nuclear charge here for lithium would be 3 minus the two shielding electrons for a total of plus 1. Our effective nuclear charge here is 6 minus 2, which would be plus 4. And our effective nuclear charge here would be 9 minus the 2, which would be plus 7. So we can see clearly that our effective nuclear charge, a combination of all of the attractions and all of the repulsions on these valence electrons, is increasing as we move across the period. And therefore, we see the size decrease as we move from left to right across a row in the periodic table. Now, as we move down on the periodic table, we see a different trend. So if we again start with lithium, and then go to sodium, and then go to potassium. Lithium has three protons. Sodium has 11 protons. And potassium has 19 protons. So, if we do 
another comparison. In lithium, our valence electron is in the second energy level. In sodium, it's in the third. Potassium, it's in the fourth. So we have some differentiation there. For the shielding, we have two electrons shielding our valence electron here. We have 18 electrons shielding in the sodium. I'm sorry. We have 10 electrons shielding in the sodium and 18 in the potassium. So as we move from, from top to bottom here, going down our group, from lithium to sodium to potassium, what we're seeing is that there is more shielding and then there's also an increase in the number of protons. So let's look at our effective nuclear charge for the total. So we have three protons, two electrons. Our effective nuclear charge is plus one. Here we have 11 protons, 10 shielding electrons for an effective nuclear charge of plus one. And here we have 19 protons, 18 electrons shielding, effective nuclear charge of plus one. What that means is, is that the repulsion from the core and the attraction from the nucleus is mostly about the same between all three atoms. There's one primary difference, and that is that the electrons are occupying a higher energy level for the valence. So keep in mind that generally speaking, as we increase our energy level, we're moving further and further from the atom. And so by virtue of that, we would expect the potassium valence electron to take up more space because it occupies a space farther away from the nucleus. Now, our shielding has gone up, but so is our nuclear charge. And so since our effective nuclear charge is mostly balanced throughout the three, our primary explanation for why this change occurs would be from the energy level increase. And that would be why when you move down a group, you would expect the size of the atoms to increase.